Hey guys, Tyrep up here bringing you a 2v2 today. We are on crossing in the woods. I say spawning in the south, we have Meliodas playing as Soviets. We have airborne troops, counterattack, and guard motor coordination. Team up with him is Adamir at Magnum. Playing as the British forces, going for mobile assault. From the north, we have Kion Wu playing as OKW, immediately going for elite armoured. And over here is Eti playing as OKW also with Overwatch. Do you think this is supposed to be obesity? Play on words, I'm not entirely sure. In terms of rankings, uh, allies arranged team around rank 160, Axis random team uh, Kyomu 70 ish. And uh, Kyom. And Obes Eddie uh, from 190. So Kubelhagen probing on this side of the map. It's a conscript start though, so no M3A1 to come and chase this down. Cut off play here from the Sturm Pioneers. Should be able to get the decapture at least. Conscript's going head to head with the Kubel. Now retreat after decapping this. Could have held on for a little bit longer. Just to hold the decap point for an extended period. Even if you're not going to be able to uh, win the fight. I think it's still alright. Universal carrier meanwhile on the other side. Getting a bit of work done. A couple of squads coming into the retreat path. So Kyomu sends the stern pies across. But they have to cross the road. Taking quite a lot of damage on the way through. But coming in from the other side with the truck, looking for a bit of truck push action. Pretty good idea if you're going for like the Elite Armor 221. Definitely the truck is a, a potent weapon. Pushing around the enemy squads. Oh boy! Kubwagen dead there, maybe getting trapped in that little corner. There it goes. But yeah, Paul uses this a lot. It's actually quite uh, resilient, and I believe that uh, it actually has 0.5 more armor on the rear than it does on the front. So you can't even like get on the rear armor and do a lot of damage to it. it doesn't work. Well, here comes the 221. We can do a bit of bleed over here. Universal Carrier quite low in health. Has not upgraded it with the Vickers yet. Maybe trying to sure that it actually survives but he's run away from the engineers which can threaten the snare potentially get some repairs going as well bit of a ring around the rosy on the site Ready for orders. i think honestly if he upgraded this even from this amount of health he could still beat the 221 as long as he doesn't get flanked tommy's going to come back out try to get some small arms damage and able to chase that away, make a clean escape with the Universal Carrier. Enemy causing trouble, trying to take one of our points. Okay, conscripts coming back out to this side. Pretty standard stuff. Three conscripts, two combat engineers. A lot of sandbags coming up for Obez Eti. coming in from the other side though nullifying that cover we do have some Jaeger lights out though and there we go the double flamers full retreat there for Obez Eti 221 switching sides here conscripts do not have anti-tank grenades oh now they do Maybe he just didn't have the munitions for it, actually. I don't think we'd seen any Molotovs thrown out yet, though. Okay, we've got Bolster ticked by Adamir. Universal Carrier returning to the action. Battle group coming up for Kion Wu. Double battle group, which is a bit of a shame. But one player should go mechanized on this map. Such a strong map for the Walking Stuka. Oh well. 
Also, you know, maybe a map where you could share healing. One staying at a safe range here. I'm not going to get Ura anti tank grenaded unless you're asleep at the wheel. Universal carrier doing some nice damage. So he's quite slow to vet here. Still not even vet one. Get any sandbags up over here with the conscripts, so gonna get overrun and got the stern pies coming into the retreat path as well. Maybe looking to get some action on the negative cover. Just one, maybe two more models. Push onto the cutoff, but that could be lethal for Kion Wu. The universal carrier coming in, getting some big hits. Looks like he's going to retreat off to the side, so not on negative cover in that particular area. Here comes the 221. Upgrading to the 223, but the Stumpo dies at max range. Heartbreaker there for Kion Wu. It's going to slow down his repairs on this 223 as well. Didn't have vets yet either. I don't think he was quite vet one, so couldn't come in with the smoke to cover the Stumpo's retreat. He just got vet, I believe. So yeah, that's a big, big loss. But now with the armor and health upgrade, 223 much safer against the Universal Carrier. So he's going to be a lot more aggressive. Also, way these squads that don't have any snares. And uh, not the best territory control now for the Allies. We've got an anti-tank gun, but Adami, I think trying to save manpower for the Commandos. Not quite at three command points yet. But it's a little bit of a strange build to go for Bolster if you're only going to be making use of two squads to take advantage of it. Going for the commandos, going for the uh, recovery sappers. That's you know, part of the reason why I made the Brimando strategy in the first place. To save on the Bolster. Especially in uh, 1v1. Can't really afford... Uh, those extra resources just for two squads. Okay, jumbo sized clown car here for Meliodas. Do you remember that flamethrowers are less effective in water? I think that's what we're seeing here. The double flame is not doing as well as he might expect. Upgrading with the quads. No Rakitten, it's in the build now for Obez Eti. Stone Pies are not upgrading with the Shrek. But it's a good idea to try and get some suppression on them just in case they did pop it during this fight. Obviously, while suppressed, the accuracy is terrible. And Keep the quad nice and healthy. He's backing away with it now. Going for a Zis next. 223 coming across. Conscripts could have popped the Ura into anti tank grenade, and I think it would have worked out. Throws out a Molotov, but out on the negative cover river. Takes some big hits. Do remember that your know, water negative cover is different to road negative cover. More vulnerable to small arms. What's he talking about? M5. Recon aircraft is refueled. Shock troops awaiting deployment. Maybe one Not entirely sure. What, what, what was lucky? Ready for order. Okay. We're the infiltration commandos out, waiting for the cooldown for a second squad. Put the 223 in cash mode while it's being repaired up, but might even leave it there. Ready for I'm going to put down the next tech truck. It's going to be inside the base. Always a safer option against the British players. Some 
lines up, killing off the sandbags there with a raquette and then a big old blob rolling through the middle of the map. Maybe looking to flank Meliodas. Gonna go for these flamer squads first. And a little bit of a late retreat. Have to cross the river. This could be a wipe on the lead squad. And these, one down. And the second one getting very low. Just surviving though. Could maybe get these conscripts though. There's a bit of negative cover down here as well. The quad coming in to save the day with the suppression. Suppressing one squad. Oh, the Shrek misses. I think the quad would have survived one Shrek shot anyway. But not a Shrek and a Faust. Quad still having to back away. The Raketan running past the circle so he could see it closing the distance. Having to come across his sister's teammate in this two on one. Flamer working well there. The Rakesson actually shooting down the tier 2 tech structure. Don't see that too often. Recon plane up from Naliodas. We've got a Zis barrage on the Rakesson. It's pretty spaced out though. One more shot and the, tr the uh, structure is dead. And there it goes. Trying to repair it up, but. Not able to do so. Could lose the Raketan though. No, does survive. That was a close call. Meanwhile, out the back here, the Universal Carrier comes in and gets two wipes on retreat. Oh, that's disastrous for Kion Wu. Does manage to knock out the Universal Carrier at least. Good incendiary grenade there. A bit of pushing as well. Oh, this could be a wipe in return. No, he doesn't run over the mine. Got the AT gun guarding the retreat as well. Okay, medics in the build now for enemies. Got a lot of manpower floating. He really needs to spin through some of this. Second squad engineers is generally a pretty good idea. We're kind of coming to the phase where you might get tanks. Another snaring squad is always handy. Getting some weapons going. Looks like he's going to equip the sections first. Does get the extra squad of recovery sappers. He's to start his tech up as well. Uh, well overdue. They a similar story. A lot of resources floating. Needs to maybe build another combat engineer into a uh, tier 4 tech. Conscripts have to give up on the sandbag construction. Capping the fuel though, gonna try and hold out there for a bit longer. The commandos. Doing some work, but the 221 bleeding them hard. Staying out of harm's way as well. Backing out for repairs. So yeah, definitely quite a few uh, optimizations required on these allied build orders. So much manpower flow. Calling in some shock troops now that burns through most of it, as well as the second combat engineer. The fact that he's gone for this many units at this stage maybe suggest a stall for KV-1 because building a uh, tier 4 tech now sorry some mines maybe cancelled building a tier 4 tech now will uh I mean, probably don't have enough manpower for a T-34 once it completes so now you're just kind of struggling to Hold on to territory, sandbags everywhere for Obez Itty. Gonna dive onto the cutoff and no flak base covering this at all. With the base building. Okay, and popping for Mother Russia coming in looking for some whites on retreats with the shock troops here. And Kyomu suffering again. Snare off on the 221. 
Um, Scripps now could finish the job with a couple more AT mates. Quad rolling through the center. No AT grenades, but they do manage to wipe the machine gun on retreat. Jumping on. Looking to get away with that now. Great flank there with four Mother Russia, but this could be the end of the quad. Where's the second Faust? One more Faust. No, the Raketan. Doesn't even need it. So the Allies came out better off though. Squad wipe. A uh, weapon steal. Just versus one vehicle going down. It is a pretty useful vehicle though since this Etty does have sector assault. Having the quad round to shoot that down. Very helpful. And no, actually does manage to squeeze in a T-34. It's going to impact his reinforcements but opting to go for it. We have a Panzer IV in the build for a Bez Etty. Mines triggering. Axis with some dominant territory control right now though. We're losing a capture point. Panzer IV about to pop out. Double Panzer IVs in fact. After the OBZ, he's still going to have a bit of room, a bit of resources. Maybe thinking about the howitzer. There's pretty much enough resources for that. Don't see any Rakitans. Here it comes, but Cromwell. A bit of work done. Rakitan from the other side, but exposes itself to some commando fire. Very lucky to escape. It's a second close escape on that raquette and for this Eddie. The T gun coming out from this side, but the Obers are there. Might get some nice damage done. So the Panzer IV switching over though. Oh! Oh, he lost the squad. I mean, it was pretty low. It was about half health, the Obers, and it looks like he ran into light cover there, so he's very clumped up. A mistake for Kion Wu. Don't want to be that clumped up, especially if you're already on low health. It's actually a situation where the Cromwell is not too bad, you know. It doesn't have the best AOE. It's reasonable on scatter. Quite likely to land those kind of hits. Kind of sneaking around, really want to decrew that Rakitan. Bren section working well here. Only has one Bren though. Trying to kill off the sandbags with the Rakitan. Here come the commandos. Very clumped up. Commandos with the ambush. The Panzer IV nearby though. Ooh, and gets a big hit. Might just have to get out of there. Get off the sandbags. Did allow the OKW player to win that fight as well. Good with the Rakitan. The Panzer IV, meanwhile, going to town. Gets a wipe on the conscripts on... Re no, they went. Maybe they were retreating. Just barrage onto the machine gun. Is this now has to get out of there. We do have an MG34 guarding. The Panzer IV. I'm going to clear that off. AT gun under pressure. Going to try to set up and he does manage to suppress both squads here. But the Panzer IV is getting some big hits. MG having to retreat. A T gun. Taking some big hits. Flame damage. Machine gun might be able to get that back. With the Axis. And he does indeed go for the Howitzer. He's barraging the Soviet base it looks like at the moment. And there are a few units back there. Doesn't hit anything though. Doesn't come into the capture circle, so losing that point and fueled now decap for the allies. They are capping on the other side though. Ready for action. We're ready for orders. Uh, I think there was a mine there, he's maybe detected it and his attack grounding it away. 
Oh, we got a Bofors coming up. Don't see these too often. There's another mine over there. Slightly out of detection range on the sweeper. Going for a land mattress into base. There's a lot of units back there for Abyss Itty. Dodges back. Doesn't look like that land mattress is going to hit too much. A little bit of damage onto the howitzer. Oh, this is trouble. Cromwell. But the Panzer IV blitzing in. Didn't pop the heat shells. Bounces the shot. So he has to get out of there. Definitely should have popped the heat rounds. That chase down. And uh, I did see a T-34 in the build for Maliadas at one stage. Cancelled and ends up going for the KV-1 it looks like. Second Panzer IV, meanwhile for Kion Wu. But, uh, I feel like maybe that's, that's typically just not a good idea on this map. It's such a small map. Often hard to get value out of the second medium. Oh, that's a lot of damage onto the KV. Big old force coming in from the side. Full retreat from Malyos. Did activate for Mother Russia to try and boost up the firepower. Panzer IV not coming back in, but the Shrek bouncing with the Fausts. Double fault street is too Fausts. Maybe he'll be able to kill the KV here. It's to Empire's Shrek. So I think if that even penetrates, it's not enough. He really needed the Faust. Knocks out the combat engineers at least. And so did end up coming back in, but too late. Now it's a targeting the Bofors. That's in some trouble. The Raketan goes down for Kion Wu, though. He's having a nightmare of a match. Just loss after loss. The old Panzer IV is rolling through the center here. The Bofors still standing, but only just. Steals away the Raketan. But yeah, this is one of those maps that's so small. Hard to get value out of the mediums as the game progresses because they get countered by the double AT gun so easily. The enemy are an oh, this is just some really bad handling of the engagement so far. Does he end up going down? Panzer IV takes the snare and dies. Decrude the ISG. Gonna try to come back through the center. Comes off prioritized vehicles. The Cromwell coming back in. Looking for the kill shot. And penetrates the frontal armor. And activates prioritized vehicles now. But it's too late. Cromwell bounces. Panzer IV bounces. Got a Panzer IV coming across. Obez. Not popping the speed boost and the Cromwell running hot on these penetrations that was a frontal armor shot again Obez should be popping the blitz for higher rate of fire gets the job done anyway snare out conscripts could cycle themselves through the building try throw another grenade might be able to get the kill if he did that but looks like Obez is going to get away with that Don't forget the OKW uh, Blitz does have a rate of fire boost attached to it as well. A reload bonus. Not the Ossia one, no. Oof. Push there for Kion Wu. I'll steal away the Zis. Or will he? Here comes the KV. Got a uh, land mattress. Cancelled though. Trying to stop the steal. And Kion Wu doesn't have any response to this. Trying to run around the corner with it at least. KV quite fast coming down the road. Here comes his teammate support. Kitten is there. Connecting. No Faust though. There's a four coming in from the other side. And the Maliolas can't rebuild is this would need to rebuild his tier 2 tech structure first hasn't done that yet oh this is <sighs> that was out the 18 day that was so risky though 
What was that bundle in there? That was so late. Oh, trying to run through the center with them. Okay, gets out of there fast. 221 takes a snare. I'm surprised that thing's still alive. Backing away down the road quite fast as well. You see the allies are very far behind on the victory points of this stage also. But uh, I think they're trying to invest a bit into tech. Hurting for fuel. You can see Adamir has a lot of resources floating. Not enough fuel to really build another tank. Maybe we're going to go for another Cromwell. Tried to recover the AT gun again, but again it gets decrewed. Okay, coming out. Now it's just ready to fire. Five kills at the moment. Lights coming through the center, but outnumbered two on one. They're looking to dig in on the VP. Comes back in with the 223, takes another engine, Chris. That does force away all of these troops. And he does with a pretty strong position. Okay, how he targets this, which is actually not a terrible idea. Just about. To damage, I don't know. Do howitzers do reduce damage to units in heavy cover? Don't know if I've ever, ever really looked at their uh, tables. Because you know, some pieces of rocket artillery do half damage to units in heavy cover, some do full. 100% on howitzers, should look that up at some stage. There goes the land mattress, decrease the LEFH. Got a mechanized truck coming down for Kion Wu, so maybe thinking about a King Tiger stall. Still a long way off though, I think I'd probably have built a Panther if I was him. Especially because, you know, he doesn't really have like that strong of an infantry army. Doesn't have double AT guns or anything. And Commando sneaking through the center. Gonna get the steel on the MG34. I'm a little bit surprised Adamir didn't go for a second squad of commandos. Seems like he's had the manpower to achieve that for a long time now. And this could be trouble for the Panzer IV. The Kitten not facing the right direction. Four Mother Russia active at this stage. And Obez Itty oh, loses his Obez late retreat. Kind of seemed like he was AFK for about five seconds there. I don't know what he was doing. And now the Zis is available for the recrew after all this time. Just left there. Never recovered. Some B4 action it sounds like. Into the OKW base. Not hitting too much. The Zis does get recovered by Meliodasi. Drop down the planes. Out the back here. Maybe hoping to catch the Cromwell. Don't know if they managed to lock on though. KV-1 off to the side, so unless he backs through here, he's not in trouble. So yeah, a bit of a waste of munitions for OBS Itty. I thought he's going to dr maybe drop them over here so that he could maintain his position. Also, where the KV hold on to the Zis, but activates it late in the center and didn't seem like it really did anything. The crew on the LEFH. Targeting the British base, it looks like! Gets the engineers back there. Pretty good hit for it. Seven kills. Before close to going again. side again the allies did train about just over a hundred points remaining for them they've got to be very careful now so go bears itty also maybe going for a king tiger still he's got all those tech trucks down but you know between both the okw players going for this king tiger stall it's allowed the allies back into this game completely relieve the pressure it's 
see if trying to close the show early again. The land match is decrying the LEFH. For Mother Russia active. And again, Obvious Eti maybe not respecting that. Leaving the Rakesh in, in here. As if we're struggling to penetrate. Got the AT guns coming in from the side. From, oh, had him here. As a four didn't even pop blitz. Oh, and no. B4's coming in there and destroys. It's the KV-1 that got the D crew though. Trying to come through the center with this infantry, but shut down by the machine guns. So B4 didn't really get too much done. Still has quite a lot of veterancy on it though. Putting a second one further off to the side. Come plane up, looking to spot a target for it. Maybe over here. The squad coming in on flank. For some retreats. So they're going to go for some base barrage action. The land mattress into the base. OKW troops are back there. King Tiger rolling onto the field. So they dodge most of the land mattress damage. Here's off the sandbags. Here come the double king tigers. The Axis, you know, they definitely left the allies a window to come back into this game. Going for the king tiger stall. The double king tiger stall. See how wide that door is open. Oh boy, B4 into the base. Big hits. Crawl out. This is where the suppression on the B4 can actually be quite handy, making it hard to dodge away in your base. There's still one more shot to come, but no, it looks like all shots have fired. So one false trinity down to the B4. King Tiger getting off to a slow start. The Zis in a nice position to shut it out. And do remember, oh, double AT guns for Adamir as well. Cruise the land mattress. Land mattress. The uh, commander upgrade on the King Tiger and finishes off the D crew weapon. KV1 coming in quite deep here. Got the B4. This could be nasty. A lot of units in that tight area for Obez Eti trying to dodge forwards. A dangerous game. This could be the end of the Panzer IV, though. Is this oh, he's just going to be able to get out of there? It looks like King Tiger not getting much work done with the main gun. Looks like it may be a bit of merge action into the Zis, keeping it healthy. Base how to fire onto the LFH. Try to clear that off. King Tiger just has enough momentum to continue pushing. It's King Tiger 9 kills, section down to it in the center it looks like. But some B4s getting some big hits, 9 kills on this one. Bit 2 all of a sudden. This is actually getting quite low on the weapon health. Maybe the next time it could get destroyed if he doesn't manage to repair up. And the moment the Sturmpires are occupied, repairing other things. No, like Obez Eti, maybe not making the best use of the uh, sight on the Jaegerlites either. Running into machine guns when it should be avoidable with that Jaegerlite vision. I wonder if he popped the heat shells, if he maybe would have killed him with the extra damage they provide. Might have been a missed moment for Kion Wu, and he's got so much munitions, he might as well just spam the heat shells. Doesn't need to be frugal. We stand at 300 points. Now the Axis have drained out quite a bit. Could be a good time to get some booby traps down as well once he's finished capping. Kind 
Let's try and sneak around, find the overs in close. Let's have a grenade. Both sides taking big losses. Land mattress out to the back. Touching off to the side. Oh, and he catches the folk screen, dears. This is firing. Looking for the land mattress. Looking for some revenge. Oh, and does get it. Decruise. Maybe not destroyed, but might be able to finish the job on it eventually. But the planes up for Obez Eti. What? Why, why is he? Why is he putting these planes down? KV1's all the way back here. There's nowhere near taking any damage. Okay, there we go. Big B4 hit. Big light still alive though. And Tiger's rolling a hit. Go Bez Eti. Maybe not a... Ooh! Big hit on the P4. That could go down now to the Zis. And does. Good penetration like there for Meliodas. I think Obez Eti driving around too much with this King Tiger. Should have more confidence in it just sitting still doing damage. And again, a missed opportunity I think for the KV kill. Now he's starting to get quite low, and there's this hitting Vet 3, firing for so long. Does get the D crew though. But yeah, Kyomu should have popped the heat shells again for extra damage on the KV-1. Just coming in for the snare. And this may be running over a mine. No, nope. maybe another snare. The script's dead though. T-Gun over here, D crewed. Maybe should try and kill that with the King Tiger while it's getting repaired up. Low strange land mattress, but did manage to repair off the engine crit. I'm gonna try finish off the decrew weapon. KV1 trying to come in on the rear. The conscripts looking for the Uber anti tank grenade. The KV pretty fast with its veterancy gets the engine crit. King Tiger slow turret on that. The other King Tiger just out of range now. I think it missed a shot. Where's the heat shells? Where are the heat shells? So frustrating. Oh, but a main gun crits. Oh, Cromwell, what are you doing, buddy? Getting greedy, trying to go for the other King Tiger. Got the B4, the KV-1 goes down. B4 not really hitting too much, but getting on the rear. And this is on... Oh, but the main gun crit on this as well. He's on spearhead mode, so the turret wasn't spinning around. Clumsy play there from a Bears Eti, but not punished. This King Tiger, though, does end up dying. It's pure carnage there. Taking a look at army sizes, though, as the dust settles, it looks like the allies are now ahead. Oh, and here comes a comma. Why did he go for a stamp tiger? Oh, my God. Let this be a lesson to you, chat. Or viewers. <laughs> Oftentimes, it's not enough to just have one Rakitin and a King Tiger. You need two. Might still get away with it here, though. See if the Stern Tiger's armor can hold up to the punishment. Rakitin. Struggling for an angle. The King Tiger not really coming across to assist his teammate. But he does get fortunate. Comet end up dying. Oh, but this could be B4 time. Both of them ready to fire. They're roughly in the vicinity with the angles. Storm Tiger trying to back away, trying to hide. Stuka hitting the field now for a Bears Eti. I think I'd probably be going for infantry though. Instead of more indirect fire. That was the axis, because I'm in a decent position to just close the game right now. B4 slamming down, going for the LFH. Did get repaired up at some stage. Been pretty close to knocking out these tech trucks now. Obez Eti very sloppy in their last fight, not turning on Spearhead. Just about cost him as KT. Team is back to full 
branching out, doing a lot of capping. 50 points left for the allies, here come the conscripts. We've upgraded with this with the machine gun by the way, who's missing that DPS. SU-85 from Malyadas, good option against the King Tiger for sure. It's activated for Mother Russia again. SU-85 coming in. Oh, there's the decor on the Zis. But stopping for long enough to allow the snare. And Mattress back here as well, or oh, they could even catch the walking Stuka. Try to repair up all those base structures. Forgot about these folk screen ideas though, they do survive. Could lose this battle group though. Oh, it's just still alive. The Stoom Tiger returning to the front lines now. Tiger coming back in, this is a terrible idea. Can't emphasize that enough. W35 rolling around the corner. It does have the support of one Raketan at least. Here comes the B4 though. Ooh, and there it goes. The King Tiger down. Abandoned though. But, oh, catches the SU-85. All sorts of pathfinding issues. Sturm Tiger through the center. Decrews the AT gun. And destroys it now with some follow-up. The LFH, I think that was. Just pure carnage this match, really. But yeah, that was some really bad King Tiger play. Coming back in, like with a half health King Tiger with an engine crit with barely any support. No snaring squads, it was just such a terrible idea. And it's the B4 that ends up being the punish. Couple of grenades here, gonna decrew it, it looks like. Still has enough weapon health to survive though. We now unleash our soldiers' patriotic zeal to increase combat effectiveness. Yeah, Metris into the base. He's trying to repair up these buildings. Interrupted again in the land mattress getting some big hits. This time the LFH goes down. Now the Axis are really stuck without the support of that King Tiger. 15 VPs left though for the Allies. So it won't take much of a mistake for them to lose this. The King Tiger, if the uh, Sturm Tiger rather was Vet 1, maybe he could use the grenade launcher for some success here, but not quite there yet. And uh, again, Obez Eti dropping down the planes, but why? I don't understand. Okay, Sturm Tiger trying to catch the commandos, but they're already long gone. We've got a Beaufort coming up, looking to guard the middle. Before targeting the machine gun out the back there. I, I feel like, you know, if you're not getting any tanks with this, it's not worth the munitions to activate. What does the Ossia one cost? Like, maybe 125? Just for the machine gun suppressing planes? So you're, you're kind of getting like half your money's worth. But I uh, managed to get the decrew on the machine gun there. The ISG actually working well for Obez and us doesn't really have anything on the front lines to cap with at the moment. There's a lot of resources. Maybe he needs to rebuild the KV-1. Jumping on the machine gun now, trying to recover it. And... Does so. Okay. Jim Tiger coming through the middle here. Crew, prepare for action. Got the double kittens go. from the side. Raises the section. Putting a 17 pounder back there now. Bofors doesn't have the best DPS anymore against infantry, but does have pretty good suppression, reasonably accurate, and uh, Sturmpies dropped their Shrek. Does manage to knock out that Bofors though. 
Oh boy, machine gun dead for OBS Eti and uh, dropping. And the walking Stuka kills off the conscripts. Could have be flak base working well here as well. Oh, with the B4! Monster shot. Double overs from the side, but here come the commandos. Slow to switch the focus fire across. He ends up retreating to the grenade. Some tigers here though. Predictive. No, it doesn't fire it. 17 pounders right there. Doesn't have vision though, I don't think. Is ready five rolling through the center as well. Got a land mattress over here decrewed. Here it goes. Is ready five finds the angle. Yeah, some big hits now. The 17 pounder chipping in. Oh boy, this could be the end of the Sturm Tiger. Just gets out of range before the 17 pounder can fire the second hit. That would have died. Oh, but the land mattress knocks out the overs and base Kyon Wu. No dodge. The forwards land mattress when you can bring it this far forwards. And some good scatter into the base. Decrease their kitten with the commandos. Can tiger again for Obez Itty. There's a second land mattress going for the other OKW base. How is one model all the way over there? Very strange spacing on that squad. T-34 from Maliodas has had, you know, way too many resources floating the last few minutes. Finally doing something about that. Okay, we've got a Panther. Combat Engineer's down. B4 barraging. We're getting some big hits on this as well. Close out the show on the victory points, it looks like. Trying to push into the middle. The uh, double B4 is weakening the King Tiger. I'll be able to complete the uh, decap there at least. This barrage, though. King Tiger backing to the mechanized truck. And Kyomu trying to make a play through the center, but some base outs of fire making it difficult. And uh, gets a good hit. Here comes the Sturm Tiger through the center. Looks like he's targeting the land mattress though, not the 17 pounder. Destroys the land mattress. Could, could go down now in return. Panther coming in with the artillery. Engine crit on this. Sturm Tiger. I think it's going to go down the artillery. The artillery knocks it out just before it fires the kill shot on the Sturm Tiger. Great walking Stuka hit as well. Clutch stuff there for Kion Wu. The artillery from the Panther saving the day. He's, he's coming back in with the Panther though. It's quite low. Don't know if I approve of this. There's this there. Oh, and it takes a main gun crit. That's a heartbreaker for Kion Wu. Trying to get away with it now. Kitten coming in, double Rakitten's SUA5, maybe getting baited in, he's lost vision, but the attack grounds could be open, no attack grounds though. I wonder if Kyomu has forgotten that he has emergency repairs as well. I don't know if I've seen him use it once so far, he's got so much munitions. Okay, backing away from this side. This could be good for the Axis. Looks like they're going to go for the Cap, the King Tiger. Watching on. Commander's trying to come through the center. Double Rakitans. Finish off the Lamb Mattresses. But the B4 on the Double Rakitans. Will they make it away before the second shot? Looks like it. Is that a third B4? No, they're splitting their focus fire at the moment. Tiger getting cold feet here. Should be staying in though against the shock troops. Gets the decrew on the Zis out the back. But the B4 too far away. 
He's got the Rakiss in there. He had a full health Sturmpire. Easily could have got the cap. And there's the Ram. Penetrates as well. Got the Rakiss in there, but he didn't push forwards with it. Shin Tiger now limping home. Here comes the walking Stuka looking to shut down the cap, I think. This time dodging out to the side. Wood's getting wide. Took it. Bit of damage on the SU-85 though, and that's going to now get hit by the Rakiss, and maybe even twice. Oh, what happened over here? Looks like the Commandos may be getting something going. Double Rakiss and D-Crew. And why isn't he using emergency repairs? You can tell he isn't, because it would have removed the, uh main gun crit. Bit of suppression, maybe gonna help the Obers hold on. Got some uh, B4s about ready to fire here. Oh, this could be nasty. King Tiger repairing up back here. He's on the move. He knows what's about to happen. Oh, and this is trouble. John Wu, where's the Panther? Just sitting back here. 2-2-1 goes down. What? What's he doing? The plane's brought in, though. Comet could be in some trouble. Here comes the Panther. Where's the heat shells? Bounce. Takes an engine crit. There's the heat shells. Might be an anti-tank pass on this Comet now. It's still in the zone. Have to wonder, another shot from the Panther with the heat shells, I think that Comet would be dead. So Kyomu letting that slip away from him by activating the heat shells so late. Of course with the heat shells, he, I mean, he probably would have penetrated the, the shot that bounced in the Comet as well. Is that guaranteed to pin? It probably is. If, if not, it would be like 95%, something like that. We're just trying to go for the cap. The Comet coming back into the center to assist. And the planes come through and finish him off this time. And for here, but it's uh, got the commander upgrade, of course. So almost no anti infantry DPS. King Tug rolling over to this side, but machine guns guarding with the SU 85 there. Not, not likely to have a huge amount of success. SG barraging section down to the Sturm Tiger. Oh no. They're calling the GG here. Bit of smoke out. Looking to cap behind that. Shock troops heading to the center. Oh, but the B4 knocks out the machine gun. And where's this infantry going? I thought he'd be running into the smoke. But he's instead running into the suppression. Shock Troops doing their best. And they're still on prioritized vehicles. Now the main gun's not very good against infantry, but could maybe do something. King Tiger rolling forwards here. The Rakitten. King Tiger out of range. Oh, activated spearhead mode. So it looked like it was bugged the gun briefly. And Adamir is sneaking off to the side for the capture. Five VPs left, but it's going to uh, stop the clock. Conscript's coming in. STG Fox is a strong. With the suppression, he's going to get the decap. Four VPs left. The Sturm Target through the center destroys the MG34. The Panther blitzing around from the side, looking for the SU-85 kill. One more shot, and he gets it. Oh, but the uh, Ober's going down over here. And where's he going with this squad? He should just be guarding the central VP and Steve's trying to branch out to this one. Oh, and the uh, the Fulkstreet is down. The uh, B4's here. Gets the double wipe. He needs to get in there with the Rakitten now. Two big squad losses there for Obez Eti. Two VPs 
What are the Axis doing? He, he could have just ran in there with the Rakesson and got the kill. He's coming in with the Jaeger lights. He doesn't even pop the sprint. Oh, this is, this is quite, quite frustrating to watch. The Commando is now sneaking into the center. Could even lose his walking Stuka. Where's the grenade launcher? Grenade launcher could shut this down right here. Here it comes. Getting some good hits. King Tiger doing his best against the shock troops, but here comes a fresh SU-85. Aggressive around the corner. And double misses on the SU-85. Really bad fortune there for Obez Eti. He's trying to dodge away grenade onto the Jaeger lights. They have to get out. And the King Tiger slow with the movements. The walking Stuka does go down. The Sturm Tiger coming across now. Looking for a target. We've got a Panzer IV here. Coming into the center. The going for the capture. Here comes the Panther off to the side. The Rakitin is long gone. Panther misses its first shot. SU-85 misses the return fire. But the B4 is targeting the King Tiger. Meanwhile, this Panzer IV has had enough. He comes and he kills off the B4 with the wolf, with the <laughs> Stern Tiger. This is waiting for the uh, Panzer Commander to complete the upgrade so he can drop the artillery on this and finish it off. Panther, meanwhile, getting aggressive, hoping to kill off the SU-85. He gets a good shot there with the heat shells. Panther losing vision, I think, and goes down. The artillery does knock that out. The Panzer IV gets away as well for Kion Wu. Two VPs. Two VPs. Where's he going with these squads? Why isn't he going to the VP? Okay, here we go. Jaeger lights. They can go for the cap now and that should close the show. For the Axis. Two VPs left. Two, two VPs left? What are you... <laughs> oh my god. They're going to give me a panic attack. What are they doing? Okay, here comes the Rakitin, but... The shock troops are here now. So is the King Tiger. Oh, but he knocks out the SU-85 first hit. Maybe the vision from the spearhead working. Loads. He's coming out to the far side. It looks like finally the Axis are going to be able to close the show here. With the double B4s dead, the Allies just don't have the firepower to stop the caps. Enemy probably should be deploying some infiltration commandos now, trying to jump on like the capture point. Big Sturm Tiger shot there, squad down in the center. Conscripts desperately trying to prevent the capture. Unsuccessful though. Definitely a GG. <laughs> that was a wild match. Just insane. Crazy action all over the show. Reckless plays from everybody, let's be honest, but to make for some entertaining viewing. <laughs> oh man. Axis should have been able to close this one out about 10 minutes earlier, but we, we got to see some uh, carnage after that, so we can't be too upset at, at them for it. But yeah, Kyombu eventually coming down here, knocking out the double B4s with the Sturm Tiger, with the Panzer Commander, Panzer IV. And uh, yeah, after that stage, it was pretty much GG. Definitely Adamir letting the team down right at the end here with this large amount of float. Could have made all the difference, as I was saying, like an infiltration commander coming out to this side. Maybe could have forced away these Rakitans. Stop the cap there, maybe allow them to hold on for a little bit longer. But yeah, GG, uh, very entertaining one. I think worthy of the insane game tag. Well, anyway, guys, wrap on that. If you like your game to be cast by me, details are in the video description below. Otherwise, I'll catch you off the next thrilling installment. Goodbye and good luck. I'll leave this running for 10 more seconds so I don't have to add the fighter to the end.